Hello travel enthusiasts. How are you this evening? You're looking at us from Eric's family camp in Maine. Not our typical scene at our home in our kitchen in Vermont. Yesterday was Eric's birthday. Happy birthday, Eric. We won't disclose his age. He's a little sensitive. But we are we were on the road yesterday traveling up and came here to self-quarantine ourselves, which apparently we don't have to do uh, coming to Maine from Vermont and vice versa. So that's exciting. But we're still practicing uh, safe, safe social distancing and we're here and we just arrived yesterday, had a wonderful trip up. We stopped in Portland, Maine and Portland is one of my favorite cities. There's so much there. We have a favorite seafood place that we like to go to and we were able to pick up some fresh scallops which is what we're having tonight as our appetizer and we also picked up some swordfish which was delicious. Eric asked for two steaks not knowing the size because he wasn't able to look he just stand outside and order so we ended up with two very enormous steaks and we had one last night and then we had them on our salad for lunch today so they were delicious. We're enjoying all of our seafood and you might hear the loons right now behind me and this is live this is exciting people pay to get this app to listen to loons and we have it here complimentary outdoors in the au naturel so we're very excited and we decided to oh, we yesterday in portland we had ice cream i had blueberry ice cream and cabo had his own vanilla ice cream and was just in seventh heaven and Eric got a salty caramel and then we got in last evening got all settled and we brought an old Sears boat up that we have from a cottage we used to own and so we brought that up and Eric's modified it and given it a wonderful platform for us to sit on and enjoy and we're planning on doing some fishing we took it out for its maiden voyage today and it was uh, a successful trip we got out and came back. I, I've been on many a boat where that does not happen. So we were really excited that we actually made it back to see you all this evening and have this wonderful happy hour. So looking forward to tonight. We are going very basic. Uh, tonight's beverage is going to be Miomi wine, which is a Pinot Noir that my mother turned Eric and I on to and we absolutely love it. And even what's even more exciting about it is it's a very nice wine but it's also a screw top so it's easy to take with you wherever you'd like to go and when it's the end of the evening and you just want to you know tie things up real quick all you do is screw the top back on so that is what we're having tonight because when you're at camp you're just relaxed and you're enjoying yourself so that's what we're doing and again I am Julie Johnston with Travel Life by JJ in my business, I'd like to create VIP experiences, capturing that the feelings of being alive through adventures that you've been dreaming about for active aging travelers, busy professionals, and groups. And I love to focus on areas uh, like U Europe as well as the Caribbean and Mexico are the three areas that I like to focus on. And if you have any type of groups that are uh, affinity groups such as a special group and or maybe a multi-generation family group um, I do those as well so right now obviously is not the time to be traveling but we're certainly still dreaming about when we can travel and places we might go so therefore I'm going to continue on and keep bringing you destinations and you know basically travel candy for you guys to think about and dream about and I'm always available to talk to you and have a complimentary consultation to discuss different places and go over things and um, just look towards the future. So that's what I'm really excited about. And again, tonight what we had, well, first of all, let's get our birthday boy on scene here. We got Mr. Eric Johnston. Happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Thank you. Happy, happy, yes, happy birthday. JJ. Happy, happy birthday to you, to you, to you, Ole! Thank you. What a special treat to be here for my birthday and be here with you. Yes. We're, we're traveling the way we can, the best we can. Wow. And so we're also here to celebrate Eric's father's birthday, Larry Johnston, and that is in a couple days from now. So 
We are here to celebrate Eric's birthday as well as Larry's birthday. And again, we're not disclosing ages, but everybody is, you know, happy and healthy and we're excited to be here in this celebration. So Mr. Eric, he was actually born in, I'm going to say Bangor, Maine, but I'll let him pronounce it because Mainers actually have their own language and if you've ever been here you might be familiar with that so there's definitely a some but somewhat of a a, a twang um, that I cannot accomplish so and I've lost my twang except if I spend a few friend days with my best friend David on his lobster boat I come home with a twang and Julie says where did you get that twang <laughs> <laughs> David is one of our favorites he is a lobsterman here in Maine, and we have been fortunate enough over the years that whether we're traveling um, or at home, and we used to throw Eric, back in the day we used to have uh, Leo parties, because we had a lot of friends that had birthdays all in July, and they were Leos, and we would have a big lobster fest at our cottage in Vermont. Uh, at Silver Lake and so we would throw these big lobster festivals and David sometimes would join us and sometimes not um, if not he would uh, send them to us in the mail and or bring them to us in person and it, they were and when I do lobster I just do lobster like the typical lobster would be like a lobster boil might include like your corn on the cob, your potato salad, your coleslaw. Some steamers on the side. Steamers on the side. And I don't mess around with any of the sides. I can have salad and corn and all that whenever I want. I just eat the lobsters. And if there's other seafood like steamers, I'll definitely have that as well. So I just focus on the fresh seafood. But we're going to have Eric do some trivia and get us started here this evening. Okay. Well, first round of trivia. We got four rounds. First round's two questions. First, let me uh, lay the ground rules first. Ground Excuse rules. me. Sorry. So the ground rules are: is he's going to do four series of two questions each. He'll e read each question twice, and then at the end there'll be a tiebreaker, and then he'll go through at the very end and read all the answers. And then tomorrow I'll look back at the thread and announce who the winner was, and whoever enters the correct answer the quickest and correct and then gets the most and if the tiebreakers needed we use that as well and I'll announce that tomorrow. We're gonna mail them a scallop? I don't know. <laughs> I have a feeling those scallops are gonna disappear quickly. I agree. So round one, first of the two questions, what food is Maine most famous for? What food is Maine most famous famous for? Some people may say whoopie pies, but it's not whoopie pies. And I never knew what a whoopie pie was till I married this man. <laughs> and, and I don't think they would have ever been my thing growing up. I'm not sure. When, you want to tell them what a whoopie pie is? When did you say whoopie? <laughs> <laughs> Question number two. What national park is Maine most known for? What national park is Maine most known for? There's the two questions. There you have it. Who's who's typing in the fastest? Here says some Yomi. Cheers. Mm. And if you're watching this on the replay, I'll be doing a uh, watch party later. Uh, feel free to participate at that time as well. So yes, again, we're having tonight basic, simple. We're keeping it simple because we're at camp in Maine, Eric's family camp. And tell us, Eric, when did your family um, acquire this property, which obviously you see we're at Beach Hill Pond. They're right on the water. Uh, now properties have to be built off, you like know, setbacks. A couple, couple hundred feet back. This this camp was actually built in 1914. Um, my grandfather acquired it in 1930. And from what I understand, I may have the story a little wrong, but he had gotten uh, uh, had a, a war bond or a pay bond or something from the war, and he took that one basically paycheck and bought the camp and brought home the deed to my grandmother and my grandmother was none so happy but here it is 90 years later we still have it <laughs> and your your mom and dad are both actually from here and they were born in Bar Harbor in Bar Harbor yeah yep. Bar Harbor Acadia and they both families actually had camps on Beach Hill Pond so this used to be like uh, locals from from down on the island would come up to the, the lake back and then I mean there were, when this was built, there was 
four camps on the lake and now there's a couple hundred so you'll see some boats in there and airplanes and things yeah go the, by. the so water planes here are, are a very big thing yeah so all of us in the family but we're on our fourth soon to be fifth generation of, of Johnston's at this camp that's exciting yeah yeah and so Eric just learned a new tidbit. Tell him about uh, that. It, this is called Beach Hill Pond, but actually it's a lake. Well, it's 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 the size of a lake, but it is called a pond. And it always bothered me because where we live in, in Vermont, we have a lake that is only 89 acres, very small. So uh, I researched it and we found out that the difference between a lake and a pond, a pond has no streams or rivers flowing into it. It's only outflows. A lake has streams and rivers flowing into it. Beach Hill Pond has so many springs underneath it, it only outflows. There's no there's no rivers feeding Beach Hill Pond. So since it's it's a pond, even though it's large, it's five miles long and miles, mile and a half at its widest, um, but it's a, a long lake and um, you know some fat spots and some coves and some rocks to dive off of. So that's why we're a pond even though it's the size of a, a wonderful lake. Yes, and we're going to go for a sunset cruise on our fancy schmancy boat, and Cabo gets to come as well, and we all had our life preservers on today for our, our maiden voyage, and, and we're looking forward to a sunset cruise uh, later this evening when the sun goes down a little bit. So we also, as we uh, venture around here, we love to go into downtown Bar Harbor, and I don't know if anybody who's out there tonight has been to Bar Harbor, but it is uh, called Vacation Land. Maine, Maine's tagline is uh, Vacation Land is one of their, their taglines for their state. And you go down to downtown Bar Harbor and Eric's grandmother actually used to have a B&B &B right down on Cottage Street. And I, it, I was fortunate enough to see it before it eventually uh, sold and unfortunately sold to a bicycle shop that removed the house and made it a parking lot. So with the B&B, &B, actually, I've been in the travel business since I was four. <laughs> <laughs> You're always trying to steal my thunder. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had, my parents would leave us there in the summer with my grandmother and my grandmother would help us uh, let the rooms and I got to take the keys and show the people the rooms. And then as I got a little taller, I was able to help with the laundry. The reason why I need to be a little taller because the laundry was hung out on the line in the back. Didn't she hand wash like the sheets and everything? She hand ironed the sheets. Um, the, we, she did have a wash machine, but she didn't have a dryer. So oh. we, 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 we had air dried sheets, but you had to be of a certain height to be able to hang those things. So. And how much did she charge? This is what blows my mind. Y yeah, I think downtown was, Bar Harbor, like phenomenal location. Twelve fifty nine to eighteen seventy five a night for the rooms back then. So Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. And the, bi the big business came from when the Blue Nose Ferry used to come over, and it was the slow ferry. So people would e either have to stay the night before, or when they got in late the night afterwards before they got on the road, and then they would stay and, and see Acadia National Park and Bar Harbor. And we actually did the Blue Nose Ferry one time. Eric and I uh, had clients from Key West that had a we were from Nova Scotia and had a home over there. So when we were vacationing here in Maine, we took that ferry over, and then uh, we had rented a car. Yeah. And then we continued along the coast and came back uh, on did, the coast. We did a big loop. It was a very nice trip. It was gorgeous. Yeah. The the views are stunning. Yeah, so, so the ferry's running again out of Bar Harbor, and the ferry's running again out of Portland. Um, so, so people who want to do a driving trip, once they start letting you back into Canada, yeah, I'd recommend the ferry. Right, right. Yeah. And these, these, like I said, these are all things to dream about for the future, not necessarily no, today. Not that I'm giving travel tips. <laughs> <laughs> Always stealing my thunder. <laughs> Trying anyway. <laughs> so we've also, he mentions Acadia National Park, and Acadia National Park is what, um, this area of Maine is really known for. There is a huge draw to this area, to the park, and that was uh, developed by uh, John D. Rockefeller Jr., and that was back in the early 1900s, like 1912. And there's 57 miles of uh, original carriage trails in the uh, park loop there in the park, and there's about 13 bridges 
that are these big, gorgeous granite stone uh, bridges, and they're just amazing. And he worked with engineers and uh, really wanted to have a place that no cars would drive through and that tourists could come and come through and enjoy the views. And so he had developed this and eventually um, turned it over and it was three and a half million dollars and it was 10,000 acres of land. And it, the park is just wonderful. They are known for the hiking and biking trails. They have uh, Cadillac Mountain, which is at the very top. This is out on Mount Desert Island, uh, is the Acadia National Park. And within there, you go to the top and you have Cadillac Mountain, which our nephews, both of them, had ended there on a bicycle ride. Yeah. They, where'd they start? In Seattle? They, they were, were completing the final leg of a coast-to-coast -coast trip and, and finished up the top of Cadillac. Which the top of Cadillac is oh, 13, almost 1,400 feet. And the interesting thing about Cadillac, even though it's not the tallest mountain in Maine, Katahdin is, um, Baxter National Park, or Baxter State Park, I should say. But from the top of Cadillac is the first place in the United States that you see the sunrise. Oh. Are you taking me tomorrow? <laughs> Bright and early, baby. <laughs> Eric's trying to get some sleep on this trip and sleep in, so I've been teasing him about what we're doing in the morning and how early we're getting up. He wants to go fishing, but he doesn't want to, like, get out there early in the morning. So, so that, that's not really a true fisherman in my book. But we're going we're gonna to go venture out. He's got all different tackle boxes, and we're going to venture out and see where it takes us. But also, in Acadia National Park, well, before we do that, why don't we do round two of our questions? Okay. Round two. Uh, first of the two questions, what is the main state fairy? What is the main state fairy? As in fruit. As in fruit. And next question is, what is Maine's largest city? What is Maine's largest city? Thank you. Yeah. So other things that uh, go on in Acadia National Park besides hiking and biking is they have a trolley that goes around and you can take the trolley. And they also have old carriage houses that you can see. So there's beautiful uh, craftsmanship that you can observe while you're driving along and or hiking or biking. There's also Jordan Pond uh, House there. And they are famous for these delicious hot piping popovers. And they're just amazing and so buttery. And you have them with a jam and you can do tea with it. They do serve food there, but it's not the greatest. Um, you can definitely go to other restaurants and have much better food. But as far as a place to go <clears throat> and enjoy the view of the pond, and you also have views of the mountains as well. <clears throat> and then they have these gardens, and the gardens are gorgeous. And so we love to uh, pop in there and have popovers just for the experience, the setting, and again, those are delicious. I We even bought the muffin pan, they have a special muffin pan, and then we bought the mix, and then we brought them home and we make them for company when we have company come visit. So we really enjoy that. There's also Thunder Hole, which is um, an inlet, a natural inlet, that is, is created so that when the water comes in, it thrusts up and it shoots this massive spike of water up into the air and it sounds like thunder and it's really cool to get out and go and stand there and watch it and it can really shoot high into the air it's pretty cool it is fun yeah and uh, so there's lots of things to do there's whale watching that you can do you can go and see the seals as well you can go out on a lobster boat there's food tours lobster rolls is the big thing here everybody you know everybody has their favorite spot who has the better lobster roll, you know, and how is it served? And, you know, um, a lot of people do it on the brioche, real buttery buns, and we kind of like them on the real buttery um, hot dog buns. And, and, uh, and again, it's, they keep it real simple. You don't get real fancy with it. And it's always good to have the crunchy chips, you know, like the Cape Cod chips with it, and then even like a pickle, but just really simple and really good. Well, you're making me hungry. I know. So well, we, we tonight, <laughs> tonight we have as an appetizer, 
We have the fresh scallops that we picked up in Portland yesterday. And I did something new with them. I tried them with the teriyaki, and then it caused, uh, called for fresh ginger, raw ginger, which I didn't have. However, I did bring um, pickled ginger. So like sushi that you'd have with uh, sushi. And so I used that and then brown sugar. And then you take the bacon. I, I pre-did the bacon first in the microwave or you could do it in the oven or even on a, in a skillet. So you halfway um, cook the bacon. But then you wrap the bacon and I marinated the scallops in that um, concoction that I just described. And then you uh, go ahead and wrap the bacon around and you broil uh, each side. And what you do is you put it on a, a foiled lined cookie sheet and do it six minutes under the broiler, six inches away under the broiler. Then you flip it and they say put it on a new cookie sheet with foil, which I did. And then you flip it and you do another six minutes. So why don't you try them and tell me what you oh, think. Oh, I can't wait. There's a right here in front of me. I'm dying. Mmm. 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 Delicious. Mm -hmm. Where is everybody tonight? Are you uh, going to be doing anything fun this weekend? Any special things? What what beverages are you drinking tonight? Well, tonight we're having miyomi, so cheers. Cheers, everyone. Happy hour. Happy Friday. Thank you to my mother-in-law for introducing us to it. Yes. Happy summer. Hope everybody's enjoying it the best they can. It reminds me, when we were getting married down in Key West, Florida, my friend came and David, our, our lobsterman friend, was there and he brought us these enormous uh, scallops from an area <clears throat> that he dives and they were beautiful. And my friend kept telling me how she didn't like scallops. But the next thing you know, she's eating the scallops because they were wrapped in bacon and she likes bacon. And I thought, well, heck, I'll give you a piece of bacon. You know, don't be wasting the scallops. If you don't like scallops, leave them for the folks that do because we didn't have many. And here she really just wanted the bacon. And I thought, here, you eat bacon and, and, and leave us the scallops and, and that'll be that. Because who doesn't love bacon and around anything? So you can enjoy it anything. All right, let's do round three. Round three. How many lighthouses are in Maine? And who uh, who can come the closest? So if you don't get the exact number, we're gonna find out who's closest to the number of lighthouses in Maine. Next question. Based on Maine slang, what letter in the alphabet don't Mainers pronounce? <laughs> Excuse me. Based on the slang, now the main slang, what letter in the alphabet don't Mainers pronounce? I'm a little stuck here, sorry. Oh no. Other places that we've visited when we've been uh, here and traveling is Camden, Maine. Tell us a little bit about Camden, Maine. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Put me on the spot. That's right. Here's my main expert. Well, Cam Camden's mid coast. Camden also is a home of a lot of schooners that do tours. And we like, looked into one one time. Yeah, like, they, like they do tours uh, in, in Bar Harbor, but actually there's a schooner in Camden that uh, s travels south in the winter to Key West, where we're from. So right. there's, there's, a, there's a couple schooners there. And we actually saw him down in Key West. We went and introduced ourselves. Yeah, so it's another wonderful, cute little... Was that the Appledorf? I believe so. Yep. yep. Um, and there's actually a little, little ski area right on the coast. So the only main coast ski area is in Camden. So a uh, great little little mid-coast uh, town to hang out in if you want to do the coast of Maine you know coming up through on the route one I would definitely put Camden on your list and also Maine is really known for they b build a lot of boats up in this area a lot of uh, boat areas and, and what is the whole naval um, area in Papua New York? That's in Bath, Brunswick, where they make uh, naval ships, and it's kind of neat because they build them way up the Penobscot River, and when they launch them, um, you know, we have family that have a little cottage on Popham Beach, which is the mouth of the river, and you'll be at the beach, 
uh, with this river, and this ship comes down that takes up the whole river. So it's wow. pretty amazing. Yeah, and we've seen the ships being built there, yeah. and it's just unbelievable. Yeah, they, they do a phenomenal, phenomenal job for the Navy there. And so, it being a boat area here, there's a lot of uh, marinas and, and harbors and coves, and you have South West Harbor, you have Northeast Harbor, you have Seal Cove, you all have um, Somme Sound, which is a, a natural fjord. Yeah, which is beautiful. It's, it's the only natural fjord on the east coast of the United States. Um, it goes in deep, but the, the fun thing about the area too is uh, plenty of opportunities for your staycation or whatever you're in for for vacation, but you can rent sailboats up in the area too. And the marinas are friendly as far as pulling in, the restaurants are friendly for pulling in. Where, you know, some places down south you get charged every time you do something. So the main coast is very friendly with that. And when you can get out on the water, you can see amazing homes. I mean, we went yeah. out. You, well, tell them about your father used to have some uh, boats that he chartered. And actually, Eric's family had a lobster pound in uh, Oak Point. Lock, uh, Oak Point, where was it, that? It was in, in Trenton. It, it, in Trenton. Down in Oak Point, yeah. Down in Oak Point. But they had a lobster pound restaurant where Eric and his siblings worked. So Eric's very familiar with... Um, lobsters and he actually can lull them to sleep and and make them actually perform <laughs> and and do a little dance if you, you will you can hypnotize a lobster and make him stand on his head and fan his tail out, so. yes yes and i've seen it many a time so yeah. um but tell us about the lobster pound and sometimes growing up there and the, the boat and getting out on that that was lots of fun it was a great opportunity um really really enjoyed the seafood and we would cook a couple thousand pounds of lobsters a week and at the end of the day, we could jump out in the water, so it was a great opportunity we had growing up on the coast. And they, and Eric took me out on one of the boats. Your dad had two different boats. We did. We well, did. How big were they? We had a Cal 25 oh. and a Cal 31, so I took you out on the 31. And we went to this island that at one time used to have uh, bison. It did, out in Long Island, a little island called Long Island. Yeah, so uh, again, and we would go out there and see some of the Rockefeller properties that are out there and still around. Yeah, Bartlett's Island owned by the Rockefellers. There's a deep cove there that has some uh, guest moorings that they allow people to pull in to, to, in to fair storms and weather and stuff. So, so we're, we're actually going to be going out on a wind jammer, weather permitting, on Tuesday, which is Eric's father's birthday. And it's a uh, called the Margaret Todd. And it's four mass, and it's actually going to be pretty exciting. We're really hoping that the weather holds for us so that we can do that. And he's bringing several of his church friends, and it should be a really good time. And it's going. It's a 151 foot um, ship, so it's it's of good size, and it has the four mast. And we'll be going around all the islands around Bar Harbor to Porcupines. And stuff. Yeah, we're going to be doing a two-hour sunset cruise, so it'll be perfect. Let's do our, what is it, our last round? Round four and then the tiebreaker? Yep. Um, love to. Maine is only connected to one other state. What state is it? Maine is only connected to one other state. What state is it? How much lobster does Maine yield annually? Or who can come the closest to how much lobster does Maine yield annually? And I'm, I'm assuming you're talking pounds or number of lobsters. Pounds. Pounds, yes, we're talking pounds. And the tiebreaker for everybody, Maine is bigger than the other five New England states combined. Name the other five states. Should we start with the answer? Yes, please. All right. Let's uh, have a cheers first. Though. Cheers, yeah. Cheers, everyone. Actually, TGIF. Even though we're in the north, it's quite hot here in the sun right now. Well, <laughs> Tell them a little bit of what we got here. Some of our props here this evening oh. are um, actual props that his family has used over the years. Well, in the very front is an, an original authentic lobster buoy for every lobsterman would have a buoy with their colors so they could identify their traps that were tied to the buoy. 
and we've helped our friend David paint those traps. We've done some buoy, and we've buoy painting. burned the rope and done all the, the necessary things to get ready for lobster there's season. A, there's a lot of work. Not you're just not going out and catching the lobsters. There's a lot of work. To, oh, it's to, to hard manual work. Eric's yeah. gone out uh, many a times with, with David and, and has taken some people yeah. as well. So Maine is really known for its blueberry crop. And when we were young, uh, before they um, uh, automated the harvest system, a lot of the locals growing up or the young people growing up had an opportunity to go rake blueberries. So you could, you could grab yourself a rake and go out and rake in the fields and you'd get paid by the bushel. So that's a rake that my two sisters, my brother and myself actually used to earn our summer money. I think I bought a, some uh, school clothes, bicycles. I think I got a stereo with that one. <laughs> and then if you choose, you can go clamming. So here is an authentic clam hod and a clam hoe. So you can go down to the mud flats and do some clamming, which, which we do um, recreationally, not professionally, just to go get some clams. So yeah. That's, that's what we found here that's hanging around camp that, that is perfect for me. Yes. All right. All right. We're reading the answers. Answers. Number one was what food is Maine most famous for? Lobster. And we're actually going to be having that. We found this new system. Um, normally we always get it from David, but this time we're uh, not able to connect with him. So we're ordered it up and we're picking it up tomorrow and having it on Sunday and having Eric's father here uh, to have lobster. So it's really It's excited. actually getting delivered to the other side of the lake. So all I have to do is go over in the boat, pick up the lobster. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Back. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So it's a boat pickup. Um, what national park is Maine no most known for? That would be Acadia National Park is one of the most visited U.S. national parks with over 2 million annual visitors. The park was first established and opened in 1916. What is the main state berry? The main state berry is the wild Maine blueberry. Mm. You, can, you can find Wyman's in your freezer section. That's, that's a Maine blueberry. But more blueberries grow in Maine than any other state. Over 90% of the country's blueberry crop That's and I have to tell you when you come here you have to try the blueberry beer Eric and I aren't drinking beer anymore because we're doing the keto but it's delicious so I actually had blueberry ice cream yesterday which is not keto but anyway and I might have to actually have a blueberry beer while I'm here I mean they're that good okay what is Maine's largest city the answer is Maine's largest city is Portland. That's has, where we were yesterday. It has a population of 66,363 versus the 863 people in our town. That's a little different. <laughs> uh, Greater Portland comprises of a whole one quarter of the state's 1.3 million population. How many lighthouses are in Maine? Well, uh, the ant and, and who can come closest? Well, the number of Maine lighthouses are. 67 and Quaddy Headlight is the easternmost point of the U.S. So that would be way what we call down east. <laughs> uh, based on Maine slang, what letter of the alphabet don't Mainers pronounce? Mainers don't pronounce their R's. Why not? You tell me. You're a Mainer, <laughs> not me. <laughs> Maine is only connected to one other state. What state is it? Maine is only connected and bordered by New Hampshire. New Hampshire. How much lobster does Maine annually yield? The, the Maine lobster yield annually is 40 million pounds. And did you know that Maine is the only state, U.S. state, with one syllable? I did not know that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, see? Huh. little fun fact. So that's 90% of the nation's lobster supply comes from Maine. Tiebreaker. Maine is the biggest of the five New England states combined. Name the other five states. The other five states are New Hampshire, Vermont, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode well, Island. Rhode Island. All right. Well, Thank you very much. Well. We're so glad you could join us. We're getting ready to do our sunset cruise and we're looking forward to it. Cabo's chatting with the neighbor dog, as you can hear in the background. But we're all having a wonderful time. Hope you guys had a wonderful evening. I'm Travel Light by JJ, and you can visit me on my website, Travel Light by JJ. And I do a 
every other week a newsletter on travel, so you can go on there and sign up for it. I would love to hear from you, and have a wonderful evening. Take care. Bye-bye.